Hello there and welcome back. This is Russell Emery, aka EM Fresh, for Fresh to the Stream. And right now we are riding at DuPont uh, Forest, a state forest in Brevard, North Carolina. Uh, actually, uh, on my trail forks it says Cedar Mountain, North Carolina. But uh, this is our uh, second stop in our uh, our fall uh, bike tour, so to speak. And uh, Larry and Roger are uh, in right view. Here. Out of here. Uh, Larry's okay. right there in front of you. Oh, okay. So this and, is what uh, it is. If you've been following along, oh yeah, I did really uh, Yesterday yeah. we yeah. had uh, started at. Okay. Uh, uh, from on our way down, rather from Morgantown, okay, we stopped yeah, at in that Wolf right Creek there, Trails actually. and then rode I, Tannery Knobs in Johnson City, I, uh, Tennessee. Uh, had some good beer last night and some um, meat. Uh, I forget the name of the place, um, yeah, but it's very, very delicious. We're gonna um, do loops, basically. Uh, but now, uh, let me give you an idea of what we're doing okay. here. The goal of this particular ride is to ride. Some new trails, the uh, finishing shoots. off on Ridgeline, the, the fast, uh, flowy uh, downhill trail. Yeah. And to also ride a new flow trail uh, with a little bit of tech in it called the Hickory uh, Mountain Trail or Hick Hickory Mountain Loop. Okay, but on our way there, we uh, are doing a little bit of exploring. Uh, there's a little bit of elevation here. We climbed about 1,800 feet on this particular video. And um, like it's not a bad. the road we're on right now is good. called the Lake Imaging yeah. Road, or Lake Imaging Trail. And then we're going to uh, go up a trail called uh, Locust Trail, like halfway. And then we found out that we were going the wrong way because <laughs> all these bikers were flying around, or flying down it really quickly. So... Discovered another flow trail, uh, but then we'll uh, yeah. head up to like, the uh, of, like, mountaintop like, and the then uh, ride the Shoal Creek Trail yeah, really uh, nice. all the way to Whitetail Trail. Do a little yeah. loop there, come back on Hickory it's a lot easier uh, Mountain on this Loop, and uh, do those. Uh, do the Hickory Mountain yeah, we're taking, we're downhill loop quickly. trail, and then do the <laughs> it took me forever, yes, to get to this. As point. I said before. <laughs> and so uh, I had uh, a little bit, uh, we're, we're doing this a little bit faster than I normally would because uh, Larry's up here keeping us going. Um, we're trying to get our legs warmed up. Roger's behind me. You can see the little uh, little landmark there. I remember that from last time I was I'm here in summertime when I rode Canuga I don't know for who, but... on my e-bike. Uh, and e-bikes are not allowed in this particular part of the trail. Okay. Just so you know, so don't bring your e-bike in here. You'll get hollered at by the rangers and might even get a fine. Um, I tried to ride it, and then someone stopped me before I entered the trail. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But anyway, but I am riding the uh, my high tower today uh, because my slash uh, pistons in the brake, the XT brakes, uh started to leak uh, hydraulic fluid and so uh, that's why I have I'm riding the high tower for the most part and um, <clears throat> anyways uh, doing a good job here I have this this shocks has not been used for a year and a half like the ones I'm riding on I feel kind of stiff but I can feel them like uh, loosening up the oil inside uh, it's just been sitting in my garage basically but anyway um, Headed up. I think we're still climbing. Not too bad. I guess I'm in a little bit better shape than I thought. Or maybe, um, I guess the techniques, uh, uh, if you were following me along before, um, that uh, I'm uh, learning from Larry because he's an XC gravel racer um, to not spin out so hard. Yeah, to not spin out so hard. And uh, but you can see this terrain is uh, it seems pretty flat, but the GoPro is it's really uh, off. See, you see me almost get flipped backwards. <laughs> They're really uh, steep uh, rocks here, as you can see. Um, uh, but anyways, 
I'm not going to show you all the climbing uh, of this, otherwise you get pretty bored. And just uh, to know too, if you want to jump ahead, if you just want to see us flying down hills, there are uh, chapter marks or, or, or uh, bookmarks in the description. If you're on YouTube, you can hit those chapter markers and they can jump to different parts of the uh, video. <laughs> okay, so you won't hear me blabbing along. Okay, so now we're, this is the Locust Trail. And uh, uh, we found we were going the wrong way. I think actually. it's right. I think. Um, <clears throat> let me take a look. I'm actually right. telling we're going the wrong way. Oh, no, you're way. right. You're right. wants to listen to Russell Emery, a.k.a. E.M. Fresh. <laughs> I think they're just waking up. Okay. But, uh, so, oh, actually what's happening, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on Roger a little bit. He, just, he want, doesn't want to ride on those uh, fire roads yeah, see, right I there. I think it's a downhill. Um, and so he's he's whining and moaning. Oh, I want to go off trail. I want to go on the single track. I want to go see where I can start flying. So, yeah, uh, I think uh, we uh, are tired of listening to him whine about it. <laughs> and we love Roger too. So let's just we just so we just took this one, you know, but we went up the wrong way. So, are we going up and coming back down? You see all these bikers flying down 100 miles an hour down the hill. Okay, so we keep going, and then finally we get tired of uh, getting almost uh, hammered by these uh, bikers going downhill. So we make a U-turn and okay, go right back down. It's actually quite fun. I'm actually glad we actually come up this way. Uh, or maybe that was Roger's intent anyway. Okay. For us to go up and then come down. Yeah, but then you're gonna miss out on the downhill. Yeah, so. it's completely just wraps back but anyway on. you'll see uh you catch a little air here right there catching some air rogers catching air uh, actually welcome I actually got my adrenaline back because we we're climbing climbing for quite a bit i have jumped up ahead you know, i have cut some sections out but like pretty much almost 45 minutes of climbing before we turn up this so it actually uh, made it more a little more exciting and then i get where uh, rogers coming from we don't want to be climbing the whole time Yep, very fun area. I think the top of this is at the, a little bit further up. We were almost there. Uh, let me look up my Trail Forks map. Get uh, Locust Trail. It looks like it's uh, a part of the uh, Jim Branch Trail. Oh, I like that. I got a little bit of air the, there. I think it's called the Isaac <laughs> Heath Trail. And so, yeah, typically what I think anyway, there's that. So now we're headed to the Land on Buck rocks Forest right Road. It was like dirt, and then I uh, jumped and I landed on the trail. It's just a fire road. It's kind of like bucks. a gravel road, as you see here. And uh, then we're going to. Take Buck Forest to the, the Guyon parking lot. So that's where we're headed to. And from there, we're sort of uh, debating on uh, where we should go because, uh, like uh, we said before, Roger was wanting not want to ride these trails like this. He want to have some excitement. And me too. You know what I'm saying? Me too. Yeah, we want to go off trail. We want to ride that single track, that single track gnar. And. Um, so we're just having a little trouble finding it, those trails. I think in fear of me, I'm, af I'm afraid of finding them or going the wrong way because I don't want to be climbing up too much. <laughs> you can go my we legs double out. check that way too, but no, no, you're okay, trapped. So she was stuck in the, uh, at the picnic This area. trail is, okay, now we're on the Buck Forest Trail actually. We're on the Buck Forest Road Trail. <clears throat> And we're almost to the top of the trail, but it goes down a little bit. I think it goes down a few hundred feet of uh, elevation. Right on this road, so you have a little f uh, fast and flowy sections here. <laughs> and again, some people are asking me, what uh, phone holder am I using? I'm using the SP Connect phone holder. I used to have the case, but I uh, was... Uh -uh. Needed to use it in other things like my uh, wow. tri iPhone tri tripod stand, and it would get in the way because it couldn't latch on to it because uh, that 
the part that goes into the uh, uh, adapter that locks onto the uh, bicycle um, would get in the way. And so I got this uh, quick release system there where I can just leave it, take the iPhone out only, and then I can just switch that adapter, that little holder there, to any bike I want. And I normally use the Garmin. I have a Garmin, I forget what version it is. But you'll see, you can see it on some of my other videos. But I have those primarily on the Slash and my uh, e-bike uh, on my uh, S-Works because, and my downhill bike because it's more, uh, the connection to the, bo uh, the bike is more sturdy because you're doing jumps and drops and whatnot and you don't want it to come off. I've never had a problem with this coming off, but if you, I crashed, I think, uh, I don't think it was this one. I crashed sometime. Oh, it was not on this video. It was when we got back. <laughs> we were riding Quebec Run, but that's another story. That's one of them. And then it popped can... off, but it was a big crash. So it's hard to take to make this iPhone right out come off. So. Yep. <clears throat> okay. We we're riding up still. Almost there. I can see the uh, trail up ahead. They threw a little bit of fun in there. <laughs> <laughs> Break the monotony of the climb. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, some were asking me, what is that bell? Well, that, well, it is a bell, that little thing. I haven't used it yet, that little thing that looks like a bell, a little black thing next to the iPhone. And then those are my uh, Axis handlebars, or my Axis uh, controllers. The wireless dropper post for the Reverb Axis for SRAM, and then the uh, wireless drivetrain um, for the cassette to switch the gears. There's no wire, so it's almost completely silent, basically. It's actually a nice feeling, no rattling and stuff. Yeah, this, this is not a, a very, to me, not a very, it's not like long. All right, so saying. now we're headed on like a, the... You come down so fast. Let's see here. This is like called the... Time. Just to get an extra Guyon mile before we start heading down. Otherwise, it's not. Parking trail. About okay, eight it's miles. Guyon parking trail. Total. And so you're, there's a parking lot up here. You can also park up here. That's I think amazing. it's like overflow parking for the, the bottom. Here. Or you don't want to ride up. Or you want to ride, start at the top and then ride down. <laughs> that, ride down, then ride back up Call again. Something Which I don't really think that's very fun. I would rather ride up and then ride back down. But to each his own. You can see there's a lot of people yeah, I here, think it might be over here this time of year. When I, I come here, before, yeah, I was the only one out here. You might have a hiker or two. If you look at the so ridge line, there's no strange. one here. There's no one in the parking lot. Only the, yeah, only the road, only right the, only beings here were the bears. Oh, I saw six the bears. Going. And there are bears out there. <laughs> okay. And they were just watching me get, uh, fall out of trees and stuff, scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> They didn't do anything. They're just like it's like a they're like a deer kind of like a you know you know a deer just runs out in front of you you know that's what they were doing or like a chipmunk but a two hundred pound hundred fifty pound chipmunk. I think we're primarily you know, so at the top, really eating leaves and climbing trees and stuff. It's actually quite scary. I mean, one was just staring at me. I was like, stop for a second. Okay, now this trail here is the. Uh, Oh, Skull Creek boo -boo. Trail, and so it's a fast. It's a fast. Ooh, it's rocky. I guess you could say it's a flow. Not really technical, but uh, I say it's a kind of a technical because it's kind of rough. It doesn't have that smooth uh, rock on it. Uh, that smooth, not rock, but smooth dirt on it that they pack down to make it really smooth. So it's kind of rattly, and the GoPro does this trail, no dust disease. It's kind of steep as well. Yeah. You know, when you look at these, you can't here. really tell about the elevation. You Actually, know, like it also breaks the monotony. And we're going kind of deep down in here, and it was kind of worrying me about this, is that we're going to climb back out of here again. You know, you find yourself going down for, you know, for two minutes or so. That's yeah. about, you know, at least 500 feet, all the way up. you know, if you feel yourself going downhill, you know. Uh, <clears throat> this is a fun little section. We were going to go up Skyview Valley Road to... I think the, let's see here, there's a trail called Flat Rock 
trail. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, but we didn't do that because it was 25 miles up the road. And, and like I said before, Roger the one who didn't want to ride that. Neither did I. I didn't want to ride that. Um, Larry's all game because he can ride 100, 150 miles in one shot. You know, so he's he, he's he's used to it. <laughs> you know, so. But um, let's see. Uh, what else? Someone's asked me. My handlebar grips are really big. My handlebar bar grips are big because they are the Mega Fat Paul grips. And uh, I did a video on my, just go to my YouTube and search the channel. You can actually search the channels on YouTube. And you can see my review on the Mega Fat Paul grip. And uh, I have them on all, every single bike I have. They take out that, uh, most of the vibration and the bumps. And they're actually quite comfortable. My hands aren't numb from riding along. But, but remember, uh, after watching the video, that that particular video, that you will need to get them to size to your hands. Cause Believe it or not, I had pretty long hands or pretty big hands. I didn't think I had that big of hands, but my fingers from my palm to my tip of my middle finger is all eight inches. So it's 200 millimeters, 200 millimeters of, of travel. So, um, but so there's different sizes. That's the difference between some of these uh, handlebar grips. You, I had the ones that came stock on the on the uh, high tower and they were really small and my hands were numb I couldn't even hold on if I sweat or something I was, my hands would slip off it's scary actually <laughs> but not with these and I don't even need to have gloves on actually because that's how grippy they are and comfortable they are <laughs> they look ridiculous but hey sometimes the ugliest things are the are the uh, most comfortable things and uh, best performing things Right. So, wheels are doing pretty good. I'm riding. Um, I think I have Tannis Armor inside my wheel set. Riding the the Chris King Reserve hubs. And someone asked me how much does this bike cost, and I'm not trying to brag. I don't like. I'm starting to not like those questions because I don't want. I find that um, someone came to me make me feel bad because I can't afford this and they were serious I thought they were joking but I, my intention is not to make you feel bad that, that's not what it is my intention for me is to actually to to um, to get in shape <laughs> and to explore new places and I just want to share that with you you know I, um, but not to make you feel bad if I make you feel bad I'm sorry you know, I don't want to make you feel bad uh, but uh, if you are able to invest in one, it's the best investment of your life. It's, it's an investment, and you won't have to buy a bike ever again. You know, these bikes last. That's why they cost so much. They know that you're not going to buy one of these every year. Let's go down it. Okay. Then we got to climb back to the top of where we're going. For life. Matter of fact, I haven't sold any bike I have I've ever had, except for my GT3, which that thing was too small. But uh, like, I was about to sell this one, but. I'm just going to keep it as a backup bike, and it's doing quite well right now. Um, <clears throat> the the uh, Santa Cruz up to the two, 2021s, 2022, if you're not above 200 pounds, uh, if you're above 200 pounds, it's hard for the shock to work <laughs> properly. It will, uh, it's, not, it's called progressivity. It's the geometry of the bike frame. Um, because the... Uh, uh, it doesn't mean it's a bad bike. The side tower is a good bike, but your your uh, weight just has to be below a certain weight to get the full benefits of the shock. For example, if I start climbing, I'm over 220 or 230 most of the time. <laughs> I start climbing, you ain't going or the shock won't even come up unless I put a lot of air in it. And then if you say I jump off something, the air goes out of shock really fast because it's the the frame and the shock work together. Or the link. There's a link that holds the shock to the frame. All right, and um, you can watch some of my videos explaining that process. It's a learning process for me too, because um, on my slash, the, the, map is the, the that bike is very progressive. Okay, from the get go, like you can be any weight you want for the most part, and it's really not even really using the shock, because you know, except just for what actually what it's supposed to be used for oh, yeah. i think on go. the slash you can go up to 250 very easily without ruining the, the progressivity and the way i see that is because if you go 
on a track and they have their suspension calculator, they will show it maxes out at 250. There you know. go, straight. Even though Rock Shocks on the on the actual yeah, shock yeah, set, you can go to 330 psi. That Use that equates yeah. to pounds, but that's not what you need like to go off of. Over here. You uh, where we passed. Go. okay. You go off of yeah, the, uh, the, the manufacturer's <laughs> specification for the geometry. Come back up and then do so, go a little further down that way. Let me get, get off tangent one. here. We are on the um, we were, we were on Shoal Creek Trail. Then now we're on rough roughed Kraus Trail. Okay, and then we're just gonna. We're trying to get to the top, the Hickory Loop. The Hickory Loop um, got a little disoriented. Um, but then uh, you'll see us uh, head down to White Pine Trail. Then we'll hit for these people. This is the intersection uh, to White Pine the, uh, Trail. Waterfalls and stuff. Um, <laughs> and then uh, no, right we just took White Pine, tr Pine Trail <laughs> back down to the Buck. <laughs> Uh, it's called Buck uh, Forest Trail. This, what, I thought it was Black Hickory? Forest Trail, but or, I must, my eyes are getting bad. <laughs> looks like this is Black Forest. I could have sworn it said Black Forest. I don't know. Forest Trail, but on Trail Forest it says Buck Forest Trail. Really, I've never seen a deer up here. I've seen bears, but no deer. All right, so I'm not going to show you the climb out. You already rode this for the most part, but this is the White Pine Trail. It's been like a lot of fast, flowy trail back to the um, Buck Forest Trail. So and there's that entire. If you want to skip this, you can jump to the um, the Hickory Loop descent. I didn't show the top come line up because it's very boring, you know. But it took about takes about thirty minutes to, to twenty to thirty minutes to climb up if you're tired, you know. And it's a pretty uh, steep climb up, you know. It's not that bad. It's maybe three hundred, four hundred foot elevation to climb. And then you wind through the, uh, the woods and stuff. I don't so. know why they just don't lock you anyway, into like on a Hickory uh, Mountain uh, <laughs> Road. Yeah, it should just and default. Of course, we were on it before. I'm not going to show you. Direction you're you're facing. But what you do, you're going to stay uh -huh. on this road. <laughs> Instead of going to that uh, parking lot, you're going to make that left. <laughs> You'll see. Then it'll say Hickory Mountain Road. Actually, just stay straight to get to the next oh. picnic area. It's about a, two miles up the road here. And then you'll see a little pavilion, but don't make left on the ridge line. They'll take you back back down the parking lot. Um, but just keep going straight. It looks like you can't go up the hill, but if you go, you you can make it. You know, it's like a steep hump, and then you'll start climbing up. And then it's not too bad. You know, my heart was, was pounding. I ran out of uh, energy. <laughs> but luckily, I ran out at the top, and then we took a little break. As you'll see here in a second. <clears throat> okay, so we're at the top of Hickory Mountain Loop. And I told you how to get there. It's, just stay on that road straight. Don't make any turns. All right, we'll go up the top. Now we're down, going downhill. It's a very fun, fast, flow technical trail. It's a blue, I believe, trail. Um, and uh, you can see us. Whoa! I'm down. My sugar is very low. I mean, I have no sugar. I'm well, not as burning as a protein slash. now. Like all my <laughs> carbs are gone. Light. And then your hands like are shaking. Break. Larry gave me some uh, energy <laughs> things. I think I had a, I had some fiber bars, but they were enough. Hit that jump right into the uh, burn. Um, <laughs> and then I had a goo too, and then drank a lot of water. But uh, still, like I think Take I'm in. A, I know I'm in a calorie deficit for sure. Um, on this trip <clears throat> and that's good because I lose weight okay so I think uh, I can tell because when I'm losing true weight not just water weight uh, I you just feel faster you can you feel faster your legs are more you know, your weight's not holding back imagine having 20 extra pounds on you you know that just especially when you're climbing a hill or something you're just a lot faster Okay, so look at this. We're, this is steep right here. You guys don't realize how steep it is. I'm taking Larry's lead here. It looks, I just think, he, well, they did ride it before, but man, it looks like he just rode the thing. Like, he just goes down the hill with no, like, sight unseen. You don't know what's ahead, you know? It's like he rode this already. 
and the original line is the same way. I'm like, man, I could barely keep up with them, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, I could barely keep up with them. I had to just uh, put my uh, unsque squeeze my asshole and <laughs> just follow them down there because. You know, this stuff is, we're flying fast. I think some points in Ridgeline, we're going 50 miles an hour. You know, and right, right here, we've we hit 40 miles per hour sometimes. You know, just think how bad that would be if you were to fall down right here. It would probably be that bad. There's not too many rocks on this one. It's nice and flat. But you hit a tree or something. I don't have my full face on. But surprisingly, it's, it wasn't dusty or anything. The ground was nicely packed. I think because it rained a little bit yesterday. Rain is actually pretty good. Not a lot too much oh, yeah, rain. Rain keeps the dirt down, <laughs> dust down, and then also keeps the ground grippy. You don't want it oil slick, but you just want it. Um, no, 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 no. You're good. Pat, like moist. Yeah. Okay. So. Nice feet. This is funny. It took us, uh, you know, 30 minutes to climb, 35 minutes to climb. It's only take us two minutes to go down. Two, three minutes to go down. They're doing tail whips and little whips and slashing too. Roger behind me, I can hear him. I think I'm going too slow. It's all a little air there. And here's the bottom. And out of this trail, you're just going to make a right and you're on ridge line. Actually, we're on ridge line right now, right. coming out of it. That's cool. And if you go back up that way, you'll <laughs> hit funny, that hickory. Yeah, 30 minutes road. of climbing for. Two minutes okay, so we're just going to turn around <laughs> to the right there and to head the up to Ridgeline. <sighs> Take a break. I think everybody's warmed up and everybody's adrenaline is flowing from that trail, but now more speed now. Okay, so that yeah. part, that sign on the right is where we came from, yeah. down that section. Yeah, we have they were to, saying it might have been easier to go up that like way because you can do it in reverse, but I... Bit. And then it starts down. I think you should just uh -huh. go with the flow of traffic. Yeah, you know? like, yeah, we're on <laughs> so, Ridge Line, yeah. Nope. But, uh, I, be I agree with them. It would have been easier to go up and then a better, a longer descent. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, we're on the first half, like, section of Ridge Line, but you're not there yet qu quite. You have to do a little tiny climb. You'll see here in a second. This is so fun. I don't know who made this drill. This is a nice one. This is like your award for riding all the trails in uh, Ridgeline. You could actually ride every single trail in here on your or maybe are bike. I'm now can, just a matter of knowing where to go to. Or maybe you are in this section. Oh, okay. Yeah, here is. We better climb up. Okay. Here. And as you watch this, oh, um, this is the climb. first part of Dupont. The first video. The second one is not quite as long. It's just going to show us riding so to <laughs> the waterfall. It's it right across the street here. there. It was killing me last time. And then climbing out and then taking an alternate uh, trail back that um, Larry and Roger said he never knew it was there. So I uh, helped uh, find a new trail. <laughs> so I had to get to leave yeah, that yeah, one. Here's where it starts, I think. Okay. And, the uh, and then the last video is right down the road we're going to ride the big rock. Um Trail, which is a very fun trail. <clears throat> yeah, so three part video, so stay tuned for those as well. And then uh, we're gonna go eat. I forget where we eat. Uh, I think uh, I would tell all this bit of it, but we all were getting kind of hangry. We all were getting angry. <laughs> it's just this uh, rough. Because afterwards, we come back from this ride. And our, all, all, all of our energy is gone. We're kind of annoyed because we're <laughs> hungry. You're angry when you're hungry. <laughs> and so uh, we failed to make reservations. So if you come here, and because of COVID, there's not a lot of staff. And so you have to, um, the aftermath of COVID anyway. Uh, the restaurants are open and everything. And they're really right good. Here. <laughs> um, we had a hard time here, getting a table or getting a, a restaurant. But if you make a reservation, you won't have any problem. And so I'm used to my wife being along with me on this, and she'll make the reservations. But since we're three uh, dudes, we're like, uh, who made the reservation? <laughs> you know, no one's thinking about that. You know, we're just like, hey, you need to do it. Yeah, you need to do it. Okay. But uh, we finally find a restaurant. It's really good. In the next video, or the uh, the last one, I'll tell you these the places we... Uh, we uh, 
had uh, restaurants at. Actually, I'll make a separate video of the places. I didn't get any, I think I got a few pictures of the places, but um, I'll show you the places to eat in Brevard. Um, and then we stopped at some mountain bike places too before this. I think Sasquatch, I think. I think it's one of the mountain bike places. And there's, that was really cool. There's two of them. I forget the other one. They're right almost beside each other. Right before you enter the forest. And uh, they had a lot of bikes in there. Um, compared to... Uh, I can't really say that. Uh, we have a lot of... We have pretty good bike shops in where we live in Morgantown. Um, they have a lot of bikes. But they... Uh, um, don't have a lot of components so they'll sell you you know you have an eight seven thousand dollar bicycle and then you and for my taste and for my riding style the the, the, the wheel sets and the shocks I always upgrade them so you're wasting money I wish they would just in time actually you know so you have to buy another wheel set buy another crank buy cranks buy access wire system you know it's like it gets pricey really quick. You're, you're almost up to over eleven, ten thousand dollars on a bike with that should have already had it on there. You know, had all that stuff on there, especially for what they are. Like they should just come if they're, you know, that expensive. You should just have everything on there. You know, so you don't have to worry oh, about man, it. At least for I didn't three or four any. years. Let's get it serviced or whatever. But ain't nobody figured that out yet, and they're just trying to say that COVID is the culprit and the resupply but i had no problem getting parts online i could get every part i needed you know there's no shortage of anything now the prices of stuff were higher especially on bike chains like i was afraid i broke some chains and uh um and uh i couldn't get a chain you can't ride your bike without a chain you know and so i just bought like six bike chains like the uh, eagle just to have them just in case something like this happens again you know, or your chain wears out. Or you have a wheel set or something like that. So I always keep, you know, three, you know, six, I have a six right now that are not used. Um, so I don't want to be without. All right. This is very fun. He's moving along. He's going through this, man. He ain't putting on brakes or nothing. See him kind of skid out there. He's putting <laughs> some. Uh, Good job. Man. His bike is a. He has a more of You're a. You're my hero. It's like a cross between an all mountain and a trail, but I think it's mostly almost like a, almost an XC. Like it's right on that verge of being. Like, so. I tell him he should get here. a downhill bike and join me because he can take these trails. So Roger too. Roger has a Ritmo, Ibis Ritmo. He's not riding that today. He's riding the uh, Ripley, and that uh, uh, he can tear it up on that rip now, man. <clears throat> anyway, so we're at the bottom ridge line. <laughs> you want to tell a uh, little okay, tail whips no getting no here? Roger just do dodge past. So that's it. So that's it for this video. And if I haven't thank you for before, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video where we rise to the waterfall and do an alternate route back from it. Okay, that's it.